Um, so uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share our application, Simerge app. My name is Jose Alonso Solis Lemus. I am a postdoctoral research associate working at the Cardioelectromechanics Research Center, or CMERCH for short. The, the group is part of the Biomedical Engineering and Imaging Sciences at uh, King's College London, and we work mainly in collaboration with the Guys and St. Thomas's uh, NHS Foundation Trust. I'll be talking about uh, the CMERCH app software, which is an interactive medical imaging uh, image in, um, interactive medical imaging platform for cardiovascular research. Um, now, the, the first thing I should note is that CMERSH app is a research tool, not a clinical tool. This means that the app is not for use in diagnosis or treatment of patients. However, having said that, we are building CMERSH app as a robust and reproducible platform for research. Um, so at the end of this talk, you will know a bit more about my research group. Uh, uh, the, why there is a need for a software platform like Simerge app, uh, what is it exactly, and how have we implemented it. Uh, you will also learn the basic and specific functionalities of the app. And finally, I'll talk a bit about the impact the app has had uh, in the field, uh, including interactions with the industry and, and dependent evaluations as we have managed to produce. Um, So we are a relatively, like I would say a medium-sized group. Uh, the cardioelectromechanics uh, research group uh, applies statistical machine learning and simulation approaches to combine experimental clinical data to study the physiology, pathology, diagnosis, and treatment of the heart. We are uh, somewhat large interdisciplinary uh, group with mathematicians, modelers, image analysts, statisticians, experimental researchers, and clinicians. Our office uh, is located in St. Thomas Hospital, where you, uh, you can see where, uh, roughly in the fourth floor. Uh, the offices are located around a core research, research MRI and catheter laboratory facility. This enables unique collaboration and interaction between biomedical engineers and clinical fellows to pursue translational research. As you can see, I made a, a mock blueprint, blueprint of my um, of our offices, and um, my office is down here, and I'm just a few walks away from from the nearest clinical fellow. So that that allows a lot of interaction and a lot of feedback from us, uh, from from our clinical fellows to us engineers and math mathematicians who work developing soft software for uh, for research. <clears throat> Our research focuses on four themes, cell modeling, arrhythmias, heart failure, and image analysis. We are mainly a computational models group, which means a lot of our research involves the design of computational models on mathematical representations of the cell or of the tissue or of an organ. And you can imagine our research in, in a simplified manner uh, as a range that would go from basic science, which involves uh, cell models, uh, all the way to clinical applications and how can we uh, integrate different changes into the cell model and how they affect the full organ. Um, we have, uh, we are trying to implement more and more patient specific research through image analysis. So we are able to acquire an image from a patient, process it, develop a model for it, and uh, check out results. I don't know, uh, it could be maybe maybe uh, test whether a drug would work for this particular patient or so, something like that, or look at the specific uh, fibrosis that the heart may have. Uh, all of this is, is only um, acquired because there's a common, there are soft, common software platforms. And which leads me to, to the next bit. Uh, research software it can be very difficult because Creating a research tool is one thing, but escalating it and acquiring a user base over time requires, requires much more planning. Uh, there is a variety of tools available, programming languages and programming styles and operating systems. So we found ourselves in, well, uh, the, the group found itself uh, 
about let's say five years ago, um, where they had a lot of uh, software developed that would do the same thing, and everyone was using their their own scripts and their own pipelines for their the very specific tasks. And sometimes these would be unnecessary. For example, uh, we would have ten scripts to reading a an image, which is not ideal uh, if you want to do reprodu reproducible software. So what uh, the aims of Synergy App are to create a software platform for cardiovascular and clinical research shares. There is modular, that means that it has interchangeable blocks that can be reused. It's robust, which means that it's difficult to break. And mainly it's reproducible because it produces the same output from two different users on the same data or even from the same user on the same data, right? So the same user can could do the same case multiple times and the result would be within reasonable uh, uh, closeness. Uh, we are also developing uh, ways to structure um, collaboration between our software and other groups' of software. Um, so, uh, Simmerge App is a, just, just to present it formally, uh, our application is called Simmerge App. It is a platform uh, for uh, custom uh, software. And I'm going to uh, share a few technical details. So we are currently on release version 2.2. Um, we build an application on top of uh, open source standardized software uh, called MITK. Uh, which help us to handle the user interface elements and, and certain basic modules like manual segmentation and, and those things, which are already standardized by, by this application. But we build on top of it uh, fully custom image processing and computer vision toolkits. Now, in a few words, uh, Simmerge app enables cardiovascular clinical researchers to perform advanced image analysis with limited training. And the limited training part is, is very important because uh, this has enabled us to get uh, new uh, clinical fellows working up and running much quicker and with very minimal interaction from us uh, who, who develop the software and teach them how to use it. Um, I'm going to present the, the user interface. Um, as you can see from the... Uh, on the left-hand side, there's a series of buttons that the user can select. This is only of uh, this is a uh, an example of one of the pipelines that we have developed for clinicians. Essentially, we, uh, depending on the task that the clinician wants to do, we develop a full pipeline for them, which they can use and they can uh, run as a series of, st of steps. <clears throat> uh, Simmerge App provides an, an integrated environment where cardiac uh, data visualization and workflow prototyping are presented through a common user-friendly graphical interface. Um, in this example, going back to the example, we can see the user inf interface showing one of our pipelines. So um, everything is um, quite straightforward. Uh, the user knows when to when things have finished, when things need uh, to happen. I'm not going to go deep into what's happening here because I'm going to explain it uh, further along. Now, uh, the, we, can, we can think of Simmerge App as a, a platform that has a, a set of basic modules and then a lot of uh, personal customized pipelines. So the basic models are what you would expect from an image analysis toolkit. So we have image processing tools such as registration, uh, segmentation, uh, management of that segmentation, as you can see on the right-hand side here. Uh, we've included a machine learning tool to do automatic segmentation. So then we, we relieve some of that uh, working time from the clinician to segment the data. Uh, we've developed some in-house in algorithms, as you can see, from to generate meshes and to project uh, the mesh elements onto the image data to extract the, uh, the signal intensity of, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the fibrosis in, in, an, in, a, in a late Gadolinium-enhanced scan, 
right? That that is one of our most uh, commonly used pipe uh, pipelines. Now, uh, as I said before, these can be combined into plug what we call plugins to address a specific task. Um, we have uh, five main plugins developed at the moment, and we're in the process of developing more. But essentially, we have uh, motion quantification, uh, SCAR quantification, uh, a series of measurements, and then tools to prepare an image from to take an image uh, to a mesh that has uh, that that is ready to do electrophysiology simulations. Uh, for example, uh, the motion quantification uh, pipeline. It is a plugin that estimates cardiac motion by applying an image registration warping field to a triangulated mesh of the heart's chambers. So we would get, uh, in this case, for example, 10 uh, cases acquired over uh, a short period of time uh, from, from the patient. These are CT scans in this case. And we are able to uh, uh, segment one, convert it into a mesh, and then use a registration tool to track the motion to them uh, along the image scans and then apply that motion to the mesh. And the benefit from that is that we can measure uh, much more, like very precisely how the mesh is changing and we can get, for example, area change in this case. Um, we have a morphological measurement uh, plugin. So, this is a semi-automatic method of uh, segmenting the, the blood pool uh, seg and segmenting the uh, endocardium and epicardium of the ventricles. And we can, we're able to segment uh, the, the ventricles and um, we, we can create a high resolution tetrahedral mesh uh, which is subsequently processed to tag the endocardium and the epicardium and then get measurements such as thickness, right? So you would see um, on, on the inside here, uh, it, this side is thicker. This is just a, 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 an example of how the, uh, the plugin would work. Uh, finally, the SCAR plugin is a plugin that contains data processing toolkits, which perform resampling automatic segmentation rigid registration and transformation of images, bespoke smoothing of segmentations, uh, late gadolinium enhanced image interrogation and assessment of fibrosis. And this is what I was trying to uh, mention before. So we have a, a series of colors. These colors correspond to, uh, these modules correspond to a, a certain like uh, basic module. So we would have the segmentation and the truncation of the vessels, they're part of a module. And then we have another module that helps us with the registration and generation of meshes. And then we have another module that helps us to uh, do the project, uh, projection of the, um, of the image intensities onto the mesh. And that same module helps us select the threshold for fibrosis, fibrosis and quantify the amount of scar. So we have several modules that we combine uh, and make interact uh, and interact uh, them to produce a specific pipeline. Um, as a final example of, of the functionality, uh, on this one where uh, I, I am projecting the, um, the, uh, the image intensity from the LGE scan uh, to produce the Uh, the mesh where uh, the values correspond to the signal intensity of the image. So we first uh, use an automatic segmentation of the left atrium using a convolutional neural network. We do a registration between, between the, the two scans. We have two scans as input, one MRA, which is easy to segment, and one LGE that contains the fibrosis information. And then we do a projection of the scalars in, in a mesh onto a surface mesh, which we call the fibrosis map. Um, so uh, next we have a, uh, we were able to produce some command line tools. These are very useful to do some batch processing. 
not everything needs to be done through the uh, user interface. So for example, conversion between image type, that's, that's, that should be fairly easy and we can do multiple in, with, a, with a single command uh, or perhaps uh, do a projection of scalar values if we have all the, the data for many folders that have been processed before and we just want to try different thresholds or something. We can do that uh, very easily without having to redo everything. <clears throat> uh, for our impact, so we released a paper in uh, 2020, I believe, uh, which explained in, in much further detail uh, this software. Uh, it has generated a, a, a large number of uh, article studies, clinical trials, um, and comparative studies from members of, of our group and our like close collaborators. I believe we're around like 30 journal and conference papers in, in total. Um, one of these studies was a reproducibility study for the SCAR quantification pipeline. That was uh, really good for us to, to get. Um, we have been independently evaluated against a proprietary software called ADAS or ADAS 3D. And they show that uh, similar app had similar results to, to this proprietary software, which was uh, fantastic. This was a completely independent work done uh, by a university in Amsterdam, I believe. Um, I, I, the, the names keep my, um, my head, sorry. And we have also provided commercial services. Uh, we were, uh, for, for example, the, we did the Medtronic Fire and Ice 2 clinical trial, which involved comparing types of ablation, a, a, a comparison, trying to do a, a, um, a good comparison between a radio frequency ablation, which is common, to cryogenic ablation, which is not that common. Um, and finally, uh, just a, a few bits of contact. If you use Twitter, we have a Twitter handle. We have a, a web page for our group, and we have a web page specifically for our app. Um, we host everything on GitHub. It's important to note that Simmerchap is free and open source, source software, and we intend to keep it that way as long as we can. Um, so we have a Twitter page. We have our, our GitHub page and it's it's quite um, it's reasonably dynamic. We 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 have issues and we have a wiki for people to contact us and uh, we, we have some interaction from our users. Um, and and just uh, finally I realized I think I spoke a bit too quickly, but maybe that's okay. Uh, our extended group, uh, we have a lot of uh, postdoctoral researchers, PhD students, clinical fellows that helps us. Uh, our, our PI is uh, Stephen Meter, but we have all of our clinical collaborators, uh, postdocs, um, even past group members who actively uh, work with us. So I'm very thankful for your time. I'm looking forward to any of your questions. <laughs>